Ash just take a step back a little bit. He's taking fantastic fights, and then he's, like, committing. If he just cleaned up the Widowmine field, took the fourth base and defended, like, transitioned into Storm, I feel like it would have been in a much better position in that game. We'll see if he changes it up here for game number three of Zest versus Beyond. New Gettysburg으로 떠납니다. We are on New Gettysburg for set number three, and down on the bottom left, the KT Protoss in the purple, it is Zest. And his opponent tying it up in game number two. It is the teamless Terran, it is Bian. Very impressive control there in that previous set. We'll gas first yet again here hmm. on New Gettysburg. And obviously, this is a map where uh, the rush distance by air is quick, and you have a lot of dead air space to work with to escape with the drop, and you have different angles you can come in with. Uh, it's not, however, very easy to attack the natural and the third base with drops because there's not a lot of dead air space in that location. And that's where you find yourself having a little bit of trouble. This is a map where, when it first came out, a lot of people were hoping we'd see more island play in this matchup. We really don't so far. And this is the matchup, I feel, where the bridge is used the least. This is the map where we see very few early timing attacks. It's usually all about uh, the mid to late game. Uh, Beyond versus Classic on this map is a classic example, uh, no pun intended, where uh, it went super late game. We're talking five bases, mass colossi, we saw some disruptors, uh, supreme late game. And I wouldn't be surprised to see it get there as well. I mean, Zest's style is very much this pressure on two base into a fast third. He may go for that, but I don't expect Beyond to die to it. And I think it's going to be pretty hard for Zest to really uh, punish Beyond's third base because it's just so far away. I, I would definitely expect to see a lot of Warp Prism play on this map. You know, get those Adepts in. Uh, something we've seen a lot of the time. Uh, you know, we've seen Terrans get torn apart by this and Zergs as well is uh, if you send your army uh, over to the third base and you force a big reaction over there and then you, you've got like eight to 10 gates on you know three, four bases and you send the warp prism into the main and you get one huge warp in it and they don't respond and then they can't stop your warp prism and it's protected by 10 adepts and then they warp in again and then they're trying to defend their third base while defending their main and they just get torn apart and lose like 30 SCVs slash 30 drones. Yeah. Maybe I mean, that's a style that Zest wants to try out here. The third base is very far away also, the main base is very large. It's uh, one of the largest main uh, bases in the map pool. So if you have adepts on the edge of the base, it takes a little bit longer to go back and deal with those. You have to have a little bit more of a commitment to that. Now, in this game, we see a solo Hellion coming out for some scouting, and then we'll come in here for the harass. The Stalker is at the ready to stop a Hellion or Reaper from coming up to confirm what is happening. Should just be able to drive by, though. Second Stalker, though, might be able to do some body blocking. Even the probe trying to get in there, do a bit of blocking as well. And the Hellion is going to get a full scout of the base. When you think about that, that's a lot cheaper than a scan, right? So he saw everything that's going on here that perhaps in a main as big as this, a scan wouldn't even be able to see. That's so right. Hellion, a very good scouting unit this early on in the game. He knows that Zest for now is playing you know, very standard, right? N nothing too out of the ordinary. Maybe he notices that the Twilight Council is a bit later than normal uh, because we do actually do not have that here. He's just going for a very fast warp prism this time. Quick Prism, and uh, just probably going to take a faster third base, I imagine, uh, with less pressure. He's going to have a lot more resources to work with otherwise uh, with no blink on the, the table. And, you know, let's be real, the blink didn't do too much for him in either game, uh, having it early. You know, when it was useful was later on, so rushing it out not as necessary here. But this drop's going to come over here. There is one pylon in position. He's going to spot the Warp Prism as well. Looks like Zest will not oh. spot the drop, though. Actually... <laughs> <laughs> the drop is like chasing after it, going the wrong way, running into it. the wall. Yeah, and then you hit the wall there. That's a bit unfortunate. This is a really strong army out of Zest. He's, he's, he's got to be careful here. And, uh, you know, it doesn't have blink, but this is a lot of units already. 
This Widowmine just out of position. Zest actually warping and just out of the range here. And he does have this Observer. He's going to be able to snipe this Widowmine to start. Yeah, definitely the Widowmine buying a little bit of time. This Bunker pretty useless though because the War Prism is going to go for the main base. Even though he has a Viking here, if the Stalkers get unloaded, they can kill it. Or it can kill the Prism and then he can do a warp in. He only has a few gateways though. I really don't feel this is all in. He's just trying to put on a little bit of pressure. Beyond's pressure got shut down. His just simply by this Viking, maybe two. And I think that, that kind of ends up being the end of this early game attack on both sides. The Prism is coming now down to the backside of this natural. Oh, look at this Marine, oh. gonna scout this and also nearly deny this. Here's the, the drop I was talking about. We'll get a little bit of damage, but it's not a push. You know, it's a stalker drop, which is yeah. kind of strange, but uh, we see it every now and then, especially on this map. Just gonna deny some mining time, you know, I, I feel like maybe he wanted to put on a bit of pressure with nine stalkers very early, uh, but because Bion was playing so safe, he didn't really get a chance, you know, with the tanks, with the bunker there, it's like, okay, I, I'm just going to back off, take a third base, and actually tech very fast up to a robotic space, so maybe some Colossi play here in this game. Yeah, it seems that way. Bion, I think, misreading the situation a little bit, going into three siege tanks again, his sim is very late. And I think Zest, with that drop and with the two observers he had out, really got a better idea of what's happening. He knows that Bion can't attack him with those siege tanks on this map. The rush distance is too far through the middle. He shut down this drop, so he's saying, I'm now able to greedily tech to, uh, you know, Colossi while taking a third base off of just three gateways because you made three siege tanks and you don't have a third. And right now I'd say Zest is massively ahead. You know, he's got the better economy, he has the better tech, and Bion is not equipped to deal with Colossi yet, uh, whereas the first Colossus is on its way, and Bion still won't know about it for a while. Yeah, this is a, a really big mix-up as well, you know. Zest's style is just, as I was saying before, you make eight gateways as soon as possible, uh, right after you get that Nexus, and you put on massive gateway pressure, you're doing Warp Prism Harass, you're really just keeping the turn in his base, but it's, it's kind of like the situation where he identified, as you were saying, Bion is playing it so safe that he's going to skip Twilight Council tech, not going to make that many adepts, uh, get stalkers to, to stop drops and you know put on some pressure as well and then just tech into Colossi before he has any idea. So Bion a little bit behind the eight ball here for sure. We'll see if he can kind of identify this. Perhaps with a drop he can. I think he will need to. I think he should really hit the third base hard from the north. That leaves him vulnerable to counterattacks, which is why he's leaving some units behind perhaps here. Which is, you know, it's a scary thing. He has that Viking out there which should make him feel a little bit more secure. In fact, he's not even going to move out as I thought he would. Just now starting combat shields. Even without combat shields, if he just lets this base go, I mean, look, Glaives, Extended Thermal Lance, 1-1 one -one upgrades, all of these things coming up here in the forward base. It's very hard to attack on this map, but dropping is a, another thing entirely. And Beyond is just so massively behind. As it stands right now, Zest will have a mining fourth base before Bion has his mining third base. So this is a bit alarming. And I think Bion needs to really start to assess this situation. If he does not, if he continues to either read this incorrectly or, or lack the confidence to pressure, Zest is just going to get further and further ahead. Yeah, it's very true. I think it's just a lack of information here for Bion. And uh, he's still kind of, he scans here and he sees the Colossus. He's like, oh, okay, wait, let me back off here and start Viking production immediately because if he's got a, a Colossus already, then, uh, you know, definitely a very scary situation for me. And uh, the interesting thing about this is that he's, the blink is going to be so late with how late that Twilight Council was, but he's going to have 1-1 one, one and Resonating Glaives first. So still going to be a very strong army with just Stalker, you know, support there. They're not going to be that, you know, anti-air, I'm going to blink in and snipe your Vikings kind of style. Not just yet, but... Uh, you know, definitely still going to have a very strong army here with the Adepts. Because He's already he, got 12. Because he has such a large Colossus count already as well, Bion has to make so many Vikings that he's not making Liberators. So the Stalker's not that big of an issue because even if he doesn't kill the Vikings, his Colossi will do the damage before they're killed anyways, and then he just wins the fight. This is an amazing run by over here. This third base, which is finally, finally operational, will be stopped operations by these Adepts. Glaive's finish here. He's going to use a Liberator to clear this up. This group of Adepts is picking off Widow Mines right now as well. Bion will be able to clean up the majority of these. The rest of them will shade away. Looks like just two will escape here. The rest of these Adepts just walk away they can save their shade and come back in later for them gonna get picked up and again Bion is still unable to put a dent into what 
Zest is doing here. This starts to feel a little bit similar to the, the game versus Classic in the SSL that these two played. Guns made the second starport. He's really committing to these Vikings. He needs to get them out ASAP. He needs to have enough Vikings to wipe those Colossi. Now, remember we talked about how good Bjorn's control is. And that's uh, something that's going to come into play here. The game that he played on this map versus SOS was one with Viking control. But let's not forget that Zest forgot Colossus range, something that Zest did, uh, did not do in this game so far. Yes, for sure. And uh, I would love to see actually Zest transition with that fourth base into Storm here in a bit. I mean, if he identified the fact that Beyond is going so hard on the Viking production, that would be just so fantastic. The map is so big, you have so much time to go for that. I do see him going for Archons for now instead. He does have that Templar Archives, but no Storm just yet. When you look at the minimap, you can really get the feel of how this game is uh, is being played right now and how how a Terran feels while behind in this matchup. You can see that his army moves across the map, an entire army, an almost maxed out army, it goes to the midway point. He, he knows he can't attack into the Protoss. He knows he can't drop, probably it's too risky. He's kind of out there in the middle of the map. And while he is Adepts run by, harass, he has to send his entire army back. He loses that moment to perhaps attack, to perhaps take an engagement with his Vikings. This army was all the way back to his bases, whereas Zest is happy to sit back because he has a better economy, he has a better tech, he's going double upgrades, he's going to have this blinks is. soon, he could go into the Storm, he already has the Temporal Archives. Yeah, he's not going into Storm, I think, for now, because he's he's got this timing with 2-2 two, two and blink and just a massive, maxed out army with five Colossi, three Archons, and the 2-2 two, two for Beyond is behind. And what does he have, really, to, to fight this army? It's just such a massive Protoss army. I mean, I, I suppose he does have a, a huge amount of Vikings, so he'll be able to snipe those uh, Colossi very fast, but that's really all he's got going for himself at this time. Nice Liberator Grass here, This is though. something he's got going for him. That's going to really limit the probe counts here, actually dropping it down to all the way to 50. And now he's just going to engage here. Ooh, this is a bit aggressive by Zest. into a concave with Siege Tanks. Vikings on the high ground here. The Colossi doing a lot of damage. Beyond is going to just try to save his Bio and allow the Vikings to eliminate the Colossus. Then take a fight with Bio alone here. The Siege Tank actually being repaired. Doing a lot of damage. The Colossi here not able to get their full value, but this is such a large Protoss army. It's just way too many units, as I was saying before. Heavily upgraded. The 2-2 for Beyond only finishing now. Too late. Too late right indeed. after the fight ends. He's going to lose his third base. And a huge Protoss army still left over. I'm sure Zest is fine that his probes were lost. He can make more units, more Adepts coming in here. And they shade in right on top of this army. EMPs go down on all of these Adepts. They're going to fade away very quickly, but I don't think he has enough to deal with the rest of this army. GG, Zest with the upset. We'll move on to the winner's match, 2-1. Stone Cold Killer, man. No reaction there. Kind of looking how he did before the match. is gone. Emotional as ever. Very unhappy with that loss there. You can, just, you can see how helpless a Terran could be when you get behind like that versus a Protoss who was so greedy with tech because you don't have it's the a answer. rough map, you don't, have, very... you don't have the answer for the Colossi, so you have to make Vikings because you can't make Liberators. And the Liberator is the best friend of a Terran in the mid game because you can force fights where the Protoss can't get underneath the Liberation Zones, can't get it, or rather can't avoid them, can't get underneath the Liberators. They have to make this weird amount of Stalkers that aren't good versus Bio, they're only good versus Liberators. But in this situation, he can't make those because he has to make Vikings. If he makes the Liberators, then he dies. And uh, it's very, very frustrating. The, the Sometimes we see games on this map where like Jachi, for example, would go for Ballistics in this case, but that's not really Beyond's style. And uh, yeah, and even Zest showing a type of style that is definitely not his style, but it was extremely smart. And Zest taking a best of three against the GSL champion when the last time we saw him, he cannon rushed in a PvP. So maybe he's back. Maybe he has been practicing a lot. Guys, we are going to go to a quick commercial break here. They're going to do their maps right now, by the way, as before we go to this break. We're not going to do this on camera. We're going to have that veto screen in the moment. But this is Tablet Man. He's still the guy who does the vetoes <laughs> here. Some fan service here. So guys, we are going to be going to that break right now. When we come back, the best of three between Rogue and me.